as artists, we're incredibly excited to have our work displayed in the context of the ghosts below here at the Marine Mammal Center. They presented us with the possibility of eight large bins, tubs, of the contents, the plastic uh, netting from a sperm whale. And we, oh, we thought about it, thought, wow, what could we, what could we make? And the creative process started turning around in our minds and we said, yeah, let's, let's, let's give this, this seems to be the exact right material for us. This netting that we're looking at is by its number and weight is about 20% of plastic pollution in the ocean. Of course, seals get caught in it, birds get caught in it, turtles, um, and because it smells like fish, whales eat it. We had, uh, we had seen pictures of the necropsy of the whale, and it was pretty awful looking. Especially uh, the photographs of them actually extracting these big snarls of netting from the stomach. It's a, almost an inconceivable uh, image to think that this whale uh, had consumed so much. It was over 450 pounds. These nets come from all over the Pacific Rim and they sink and float and rise throughout the ocean and are almost like killing machines as they capture and ensnare everything. The, I think the, the basic trope of what Judith and I do is to make it beautiful, first of all, so that people don't notice that it's plastic pollution. They think, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> so people can approach it with a more open heart. Um, when you club people over the head with the, the facts of environmental degradation, there's a certain thing, a self-protective inner structure that turns your mind off. And what we're trying to do is open the mind. Around the base of the sculpture here is all of this colorful uh, ghost netting that came from Project Kaisei. Project Kaisei goes out to the North Pacific Gyre, the garbage patch. They go out there and they do research and fishing out stuff from the, uh, from the ocean. So everything that you're looking at here from the sperm whale netting, the Project Kaisei netting, and the face is all uh, plastic debris from the ocean. So the, the circle around the face was a uh, potted plant tub. The black around the eyes are eel, eel traps. traps. The eyeballs are float, fishing floats. And the mouth is some it's kind of big... It's in-place foam to keep a pipe stable. Well, the, the thing that we really want to get across is that there's that big ocean out there is not empty of human impact. That big ocean out there is um, full of our impact. There's nowhere on the planet where we don't have impact right now. The benefits of plastic are enormous, but what is equally enormous is the single-use plastic, the plastic that we use for just a split second. That little piece of cutlery, that spoon in the ice cream parlor that is just on your lips for a minute, tossed away, but is going to be here forever. So it's really the single-use plastic that we want to rethink. Everything has a story. Yeah. Um, and all of this netting, all of this stuff has a story behind it. And remember, all of this stuff was once touched by a human being and then touched by us. It's my hope that people will feel empowered, that they, in fact, can make a difference, that they're smallest gestures can all contribute to make, making a healthy ocean. You can not take a straw in your next drink. You can bring your own cup to the coffee shop. You can uh, eschew that um, sweet drink in a bottle and drink water out of your own cup. There are things that we can do and um, it's so difficult to think about controlling this world that seems in chaos and here's just one little thing that you can do. It's been really uh, rewarding to see kids and families in the embrace of the arms and feeling at once kind of 
protected and held and yet totally scared. It's kind of a good kind of scary. And it's in that way, it's really accomplishing what we had intended. And so I would really encourage people to come see the ghost net and to see the Marine Mammal Center.